we all know that Figma is practically the best design tool out there. And if you're coming from like a UI, UX design background like me, you know, you probably started your career using Adobe tools like Photoshop, InDesign, then you went into something like Sketch or Adobe XD. And then sometime right before the whole COVID era, Figma popped out. And what was great about Figma is that you can basically find specific design systems and components that were part of the community that other people created. You have full UI kits of like big brands like Apple, Airbnb, Uber. You can basically select any of these and bring them into your own project. And the best part of all is that it actually came out for free, right? You could create any type of file with all the different pages that you want all for free while all of these other tools were you know charging you they didn't they were quite limiting figma provided this easy to learn type of tool plus this free aspect right but you know times change they have to make money which is totally fine it still is a fantastic tool but it has evolved throughout the years and it does it does have quite a steep uh, learning curve when you when it comes to you know, you know building things from scratch, building design systems from, from scratch, using things like auto layout or you know using components, but in today's world where we you know we're starting to do vibe coding, we're starting you know coding is getting closer to our lives without having to be a full on developer. You can use tools like Lovable, Bolt, Cursor to kind of build out products that you want to build out. You want to kick off your design in a way that you know you don't have to start it from scratch manually like in Figma, but you can actually use an AI tool that helps you actually start out from scratch, provide you with great designs that you can use and work on and basically evolve throughout your, your whole process. So in today's video, I want to show you the AI tool that I think is basically on the road or on the track to killing Figma when it comes to designing and prototyping. And by the way, my name is Lucas. And apart from this YouTube content, I also have a Discord community, a thriving Discord community where different startup founders, different developers, designers, and we get together every single day to kind of talk about our different challenges in life, different struggles, different successes, different tools. You know, if, if you ever need help, you can always come by and kind of ask for questions. So if you're free to, you know, join these calls and, and join our community, you know, link is down in the description below. And this tool is called Magic Path and very similar to Figma, you know, we have this infinite canvas UI over here. And this is an example of something that I built yesterday. And you can kind of see if I click on this and go through the different versions, right? You're going to see that we have 33 different versions, basically me just prompting the AI to make it look one-on-one -on -one to a specific Zapier landing page that I was copying. And if we go to version number one, you're going to see that we have a completely different design, right? We have a very simple, you know, kind of it's, it's, it looks great but it's still missing a lot of things. So we have the colors, which is great. We have the fonts, but we don't have the layout that we want. We want the hero section to look more like what it looks like in the Zapier website. So if you go to zapier.com, you can see zaps make your workflow. We have this text, we have these two buttons, we have this video playing, we have these, icon, these logos down here. So we went from going from this all the way to version number 33 at the very top to look more like it's, it's supposed to. And obviously you can start out with pure English, right? Design a landing page. It shows me a feed of different creators in a design community. That's kind of like the initial way of how you can start off. And then you can ask it questions like what types of sections would you add to this page? And down here we have this no design system. We can select the design system that we create or, you know, Magic Path also gives us a few public design systems. In this case, what we can do is we can use something like Airbnb and we can also add different images, right? In this case, when I wanted to build that Zapier one, I basically took a screenshot of this specific section and brought it into Magic Path as an attached image. And it gave me that, you know, hero section that we saw earlier. So in this case, I'm just going to hit on submit. And instead of the design being generated automatically, immediately, since we asked that question, we get an answer from the AI, right? I'd include a hero section of features, creators, feed, trending designs, community highlights, and a call to action to join or explore more. Sounds great. It also gives us some suggestions of what else to add, like testimonials or events. We can exclude certain things. So this is also a great way to start, you know, prompting out your design in Magic Path. We can say, let's add events, click on enter, ready to start building the layout, say yes. 
and we basically get exactly what we want in the Airbnb style, right? We get our hero section that it basically asked us for, right? Hero section, a featured creators feed. So meet our creators. These are the featured creators. Uh, trending design, featured designs, right? Community highlights and events. Basically up here are call to action to join the community, right? Now that's one way of doing it, like via English, the English language, or, or any other type of language. I've heard of people doing it with French or German, also seems to work. And start by asking questions, right? This is the AI that you're talking to that's actually gonna generate the design. So talk to it as if it was you know, your fellow coworker or fellow designer. Anyways, the next way that I wanna show you is via paper, right? Let's say that you drew something via paper like this. I drew some nice little hero section on my notebook and I would like to transform this into a design. And what I did was I took the picture, sent it to my, to my iMac, and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna export this as a JPEG. So what we can do is basically click on this plus button over here. We're gonna add this image as a reference. So let me just drag and drop that from my finder. And you can see if I hover over this, we can see the little image over here. And we can say, we can ask it to, to build it in another type of design system that's used, for example, Claude's. And I can say, build a hero section based on the layout of the attached image. Click on enter. And crazy enough, we get the exact same type of design as my little sketch over here. Into Magic Path, we have our text on the left, we have the buttons, we have the image on the right, and we have those little four card sections at the bottom and our nav bar at the very top. Now, you might be thinking, this is you know pretty simple, this is just for for landing pages or for hero sections, but what about if we wanna do something like an app? I drew out a little app and it's basically a little mobile app, a phone with a button. I'm imagining this is gonna be like a camera feed and then we have different options to kind of choose from, right? We can basically, it can be like filters or something like that. I still haven't decided yet. And again, what we can do, you can click down here in the bottom or just double click here. And then we're just gonna drag and drop that new image over here and I'm gonna change the, the design system. We use something, you know, you, we use one of these. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make it none. I could use one of mine, but let's just make it none so we get a surprise. And we wanna build a mobile app that looks like this. So we can first ask Magic Path to see what, uh, or to describe what, what they see off, based off this, this image, right? So it says, I see a simple mobile app wireframe with three buttons labeled three, option one and two at the bottom, plus a circular button below. Would you like this as a React component? Now, we can explain it further. We can have some type of idea. So this has to be a mobile app where users can take pictures. The circular button is to capture the image. And the three options are three different filters, right? Let's go ahead and submit this. All right, and I actually created two different generations and they both have the same type of function, right? Both using the same types of prompts, same image, so let's go ahead and go over here. Let's click on open in a new tab and we're gonna allow this camera so you can see me like this, right? I'm going to inspect this so we have a mobile view. So it's exactly what we kind of wanted, a mobile view. And we have vintage, we have original, we have black and white and cheese, take a picture, retake. And basically we can start off again, right? There we go. And for the next one, let's see kind of what it did. It's probably gonna give us some other types of filters. So this is like from actually like my laptop view and I'm going to just inspect and let's see, we have option two, option three. It's basically the same type of thing, but we have, it's literally like the same um, like text that my image had three, option one and two, right? So this is just a good example of what you can build and kind of show you based off of different sketches what you have to keep in mind. Anyways, we're done with that. And you know, the great thing about Magic Path is that it's not only there to make designs, to actually prototype on different designs, but you can also bring this into cursor and actually make it, turn it into a real product. So we can go ahead, go ahead here and click on one of these. I actually like this one a little bit more because it had that name vintage and black and white. So let's just get this and over here in this code tab, let's go ahead and open in cursor. And we basically gonna copy this command open our terminal and paste this, in this command. And we're gonna name this like, uh, you know, camera, camera sketch, open in cursor. And we basically have our project here open here. So I can just go over here and click on, or type in yarn dev and just open that up. 
and we're going to get our preview, right? Allow this time. There we go. And you can see up here, local host. Um, so it's basically hosted in my computer. And what you can possibly do is, you know, again, you don't have to do all of the changes inside of, of the prompt, right? You don't have to prompt every single change. Let's say over here, for example, we can get this best thing to do is just copy, paste it, paste it right on the side of it. What we can do is we can just drag this down here. So we have it right under it. And when we click on a specific frame or component, we can click on this edit component pen tool up here. And you can basically edit a few things. You can click on one of these, click on a button, for example, change the content, change the content of this button, change the, the padding of a specific button. You know, here, this is like a div. You can basically uh, edit with AI and, and add some type of image. So if we go on mid journey or something, we can copy this video URL and then ask magic path to basically replace this place with this video paste and click on generate and boom, the video is there looking great, right? We got our lion in our hero section and it's looking fantastic. It looks kind of like a Claude type of uh, start of a, of a landing page, right? And what I'm trying to say is that with whenever you use this edit component, whenever you want to edit like a text or a color or a font, um, you know, a specific font family, let's say that we want to make this space grotesque or something, or, or, and we want to make this like a 1.2 or, or just one, for example, and we want to make this, let's say, I don't know, semi bold or for, for example, we can do that and we're not going to be charged any credits, which is great. Just make sure to always save these changes whenever you basically edit these components. And the great part of it all is that it's all here inside of one file, just like in Figma. Um, but again, these are, you know, AI generated, you can basically create a whole bunch of different types of generations. It's a fantastic tool to kind of get you started and, you know, go from sketch to idea in just seconds. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to let me know down in the comments below. But yeah, guys, other than that, hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.